today we have our guest Ferenc in the call. He will tell us some elements about model arts and also in combination with GAN. Hello everyone. Um, welcome. Can you hear my voice clearly? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Ferenc Kukuczka. Uh, I've been working in the Big Data AI spot for a year now and have been in AI since 2017. In these four years, I worked on optimizing search engines with AI, chatbots, uh, smart camera systems, email classifier systems, and now in OTC uh, on model arts. As you know, model art is the one stop development platform for AI developers in OTC. Let me tell you about the different services in model arts. Uh, as you can see in the left side of the screen, it has quite many. Uh, with XML, you can easily uh, build and deploy models without any programming machine or deep learning knowledge. This is what I will demo first. As for data management, you can build data sets here. Mm. We are uh, building one in a minute. Dev environment or development environment uh, has the Jupyter notebooks, uh, which are one of the most common widespread and authentic programming environments. Um, for data scientists and AI developers. In training management, you can create train jobs, uh, training jobs in model management models. We will review both of them. Um, and in service deployment, you can uh, deploy uh, real time or batch services. Let me begin my uh, demo by um, showing you a model art service, uh, which doesn't require any previous uh, coding or model development experience. Its name is XML. Uh, in one sentence, XML is a code-free tool that enables you to rapidly build and deploy AI models and uh, speeds up your entire AI development at a lower cost compared with conventional AI model training. XML uh, automates model design, uh, parameter optimization, uh, model training, uh, compression, and uh, deployment based on labeling. Uh, as you can see here, XML has three main subservices, uh, which are uh, image classification, object detection, and predictive analytics. Uh, image classification classifies and uh, identifies objects in images. Object detection identifies the position and class of each object in images. And uh, predictive analytics classifies or predicts structured data. Mm. Here you can see the documentation uh, of XML provided with detailed descriptions of each services at the left side, how you should uh, prepare the data. For example, if I hit uh, image classification, uh, here you can see how you should prepare the data, creating a project, uh, label uh, the data, train the model, and deploy it as a service in OTC. Uh, now I will demonstrate a simple uh, example of image classification in XML. I start from scratch, uh, so I click uh, create um, uh, data uh, management data sets and create a data set. Uh, as you can see here, I will name my data set uh, demo uh, 0 uh, uh, for uh, 16 uh, as the uh, current date. And um, I will uh, input the data set path. Mm, let me uh, choose uh, just a simple one uh, 0 for uh, 16 demo. I will create a folder here. Uh, input. Okay. I will uh, choose uh, this one as my input, and uh, I also do the same with the output. Create a folder, enter output, OK, OK. And as you can see here, images and image classification is selected by default, so I hit create now. And in uh, just a few uh, minutes, uh, this dataset demo 0 um, for uh, 16 uh, has been created. Uh, if I click on that, you can see that it has uh, zero uh, all, uh, zero unlabeled, zero labeled, so we have uh, no uh, uh, data set. This is why I prepared a data set uh, here. Uh, you can see an ob uh, object story service or OBS, uh, uh, where you can see tulips, sunflowers, roses, dandelion, and daisy. So this is um, uh, flower uh, data set. Um, you can see that I named uh, their folders. Uh, these are the label. Uh, there are altogether 100 labeled flowers, 20 images of uh, daisies, 20 roses, uh, 20 uh, dandelions, and so on. Uh, let me show you a couple of examples so you can see uh, what we are dealing with in reality. For example, if I hit uh, this one, this is, as you can see, it's in the sunflower uh, folder. 
then uh, you can see that it's a sunflower. Let me show you another one. I'll go back to here. Let me uh, choose a tulip. Uh, this one will be fine. Let me click on the link. And as you can see, it's a tulip. So what we uh, should do is uh, importing this uh, folder uh, into here. So let me uh, click import, uh, select the OBS path that I showed you before. Okay, this one, this one, and this will be your folder path. Okay, okay, we just have to wait a couple of seconds. And uh, if you refresh the page, it will hopefully uh, present all our uh, data. Oh, here they are. Let me click on the 100 all. Uh, you can see uh, our flowers here. And also the categories, the five categories, the five folders that I showed you before. So let me uh, go back to uh, the dataset dashboard, back to dataset list. So now we have the dataset. Um, uh, once we uh, have this, uh, we can finally click on XML uh, that I showed you before, create an X, uh, XML uh, image classification project. Um, for example, uh, let me name um, this uh, here. And what we have to do is specify our uh, data set because we prepared our data set uh, before. As you can see, uh, this is our uh, classification project. Uh, and if I hit create, you can see uh, here uh, that uh, you saw before, uh, but now we are in XML. So we have this label data tab, this train model tab, and this deploy service tab, uh, as you can see here. Uh, this is uh, good uh, because we only have to click on train. And once we uh, hit uh, on train, uh, you can see that uh, we hear this dataset version name, this 80-20%. Uh, um, this, that's the train validation ratio, it's a usual one. GPU is selected by default uh, this way or uh, training will be much faster. So all the default options are fine. We could uh, click OK, uh, but this uh, training procedure uh, takes um, a long time. So let me go back to XML, uh, click model management, uh, models, and as you can see, uh, I already prepared this uh, model. Um, uh, I've already um, deployed this model because when you uh, can see uh, here, if I click on that, uh, that is a deploy option and a real-time service. So uh, let me click on uh, service deployment and real-time service. These are uh, approximately five or 10 minutes uh, of uh, time. So I didn't want to uh, waste your time by um, waiting out this whole uh, procedure. This is the service uh, demo. And once I uh, hit uh, this, or you can see that it's running. Uh, you can see here in the usage guide, the endpoint, the API address, the model uh, that uh, I trained previously. Uh, you can see here that the input parameter is an image, so we have to specify an image. And the output parameter is a predicted label, so what category we have, what type of flower we have, a sunflower, a tulip, a dandelion, or um, what uh, of those five. And the score, uh, if you're familiar with machine and deep learning stuff, the score is a softmax output, so uh, we will have the output that it's uh, this flower that you uh, uploaded, it's 20% 20, 20 uh, sunflower, it's 80% uh, dandelion, so uh, we have to choose uh, the um, uh, number uh, with the most uh, percentage. So uh, let me click on predictions. And as you can see here, uh, we have uh, nothing to uh, predict here. So let me um, uh, show you a Google search. Uh, I searched uh, for uh, sunflowers. I think this uh, sunflower picture will be good. So I will uh, save this image. Okay, sunflower, uh, I saved it. And uh, I uh, download another one, uh, for example, I think this one will, will be uh, good enough uh, for the daisies. Uh, save image and uh, save. So um, both of our uh, test examples uh, are saved. And um, it's important to note uh, that uh, 20 images from all the flower kinds, uh, altogether 100 images as a training set is uh, far from a real world example where we use 
you know, tens or t uh, hundreds of thousands of training data. So uh, we shouldn't expect that it will predict with uh, 80 or 90 percent uh, the flower type, but it will be good to see uh, how it will deal with uh, two custom images that I'm going to um, uh, show you and um, upload it uh, first. Okay, uh, let me uh, first uh, select the sunflower. Uh, here we can see uh, the sunflower we uh, downloaded previously from Google. So it's a picture that our data set or training um, model has never seen before. Uh, this is why it's good to test it, how accurate, uh, how uh, precise our model is. Oh, it's cool, uh, with 59%, uh, so almost 60% of uh, percentage probability, it said it's sunflower. So our predicted label is sunflower, cool, our model is working fine. Let me show you another one. Um, this will be the daisy uh, that I uh, previously downloaded. Um, okay, uh, the daisy has been selected. Uh, you can see that um, it can be a bit trickier because it's uh, more similar to the other flowers, not that unique one as uh, the uh, sunflower, but let me hit predict and see what the outcome is. Oh, cool, it's daisy. And you can see that it's a higher percentage is 65, almost 66%. Uh, it's a daisy. So it was uh, more accurate uh, and uh, more certain than the sunflower. Um, that was the image classification uh, part of the XML. I just show it uh, quickly how the object det detection uh, part um, uh, works. So. I train the model uh, with pictures uh, that have a telecoms T symbol, uh, this uh, magenta T uh, letter. And the goal is for the model to uh, draw a bounding box around the magenta T uh, on an image uh, if it has the T logo, T sign. So I uh, hit uh, predict here, uh, as you can see. And in a couple of seconds, hopefully, uh, the T uh, will be, oh, okay, cool. As you can see, the T is uh, selected. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, here uh, with 79% um, uh, probability. So it's quite cool. Uh, this is another part as I uh, told you before um, in the uh, XML. So this was the XML uh, part of my uh, presentation. As I um, told you earlier, no previous coding experience required, just a label data set and uh, we can predict anything uh, we want to. Let me tell you a few uh, things about um, uh, data uh, management. Uh, this is the uh, data set uh, and the other part um, uh, you can uh, see that uh, before is uh, training management train jobs. Um, um, we can see uh, an already uh, trained job, uh, already trained uh, train job here. Uh, if I uh, click on uh, this one, mm, you can see the status uh, of this. Uh, it's uh, successfully created. Its specification is uh, that you can see here. It's a pretty strong one. It's 64 gigabyte GPU, and uh, we also and uh, we can also see in the right columns the running parameters. Uh, split sec, you can see that it's the usual 80-20% uh, of um, percentage, the train validation ratio. You can see that it's using uh, GPU and uh, uh, the train uh, ink set uh, is selected as uh, this one. Uh, you can also specify this in XML and the DI engine is also here. It's an inner TensorFlow TF uh, 1.8. I will speak about TensorFlow uh, in the notebook part of my presentation. But uh, the most interesting part is this algorithms uh, inception. Um, uh, the AI engines, as you can see, and the built-in algorithms and many other stuff uh, in the train jobs are customizable. Uh, let me show you what uh, built-in algorithms um, model arts uh, can provide uh, for its customers. Uh, let me click on built-in algorithms and uh, you can see all um, those uh, here. Um, we can uh, use the famous state-of-the-art real-time object detection system YOLO. You only uh, leave once. This is um, uh, its uh, uh, abbreviation. Um, um, I, you might have heard about this one. Uh, I use one of its older versions. Uh, it could rectangle all the people and cars and a lot of other things uh, on a live stream video as well. Uh, we have version 3 uh, in Model Arts here, as you can uh, see. Uh, it's a pretty cool stuff. I uh, definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, Darknet uh, is also a very useful and widespread one. It's a CNN or um, 
convolutional neural network, and uh, this pretty network can classify images into 1,000 object categories, uh, such as keyboard, mouses, pencils, and uh, many uh, animals as well. And we have different types of uh, ResNet, as you can see here, uh, from simpler ones like ResNet V1, ResNet V250, to the quite uh, complex one like faster RCN and ResNet V2, faster RCN and ResNet V1, or retinal ResNet V1. Um, uh, in the second column, you can see uh, what they are used for. Uh, as I uh, mentioned, these are all convolutional neural networks, so uh, it means that they all uh, work with images, like object detections, image classifications, and um, uh, these uh, methods. We can also see what engine runs in the background. Uh, they are either MXNet or TensorFlow. Uh, I will tell more about TensorFlow in a couple of um, minutes. The precision column is also a must-have uh, when you have to select uh, which algorithm to choose based on your data set. And uh, once you find the best one, uh, just hit create training. For example, now we will create a darknet training. Um, and uh, here you can uh, import the parameters. Uh, as you can see, here is the built-in algorithm darknet uh, chosen. And uh, I think the most interesting part is if running a parameter uh, column. Um, uh, it's, so, uh, as you can see, it's really customizable, uh, but uh, we, uh, it's important to emphasize that uh, we can eventually have very poor uh, performing models with less accuracy and less precision uh, here uh, than in XML. Uh, so we have to choose carefully, for example, if we have a 100 element uh, flower data set, as you could see before. We don't want to get the batch size to, uh, I don't know, uh, 200 or 1000. Uh, we can also add uh, extra parameters. Uh, you can see this odd running parameter. Uh, and um, um, it can be better uh, than XML uh, because um, with the appropriate knowledge, so if we are prof professional uh, in this um, um, parameter tuning, uh, tweaking, uh, hyperparameters, uh, machine learning, deep learning stuff, uh, we can uh, reach much more um, uh, accuracy and uh, precision in a model uh, than in XML. Um, we can choose uh, different frameworks as well if I hit this frequently uh, used uh, tab. Um, these are the EI engines um, like uh, Cafe, TensorFlow, MXNet, uh, PyTorch, and uh, you know PyTorch is a, the next TensorFlow, the other great and popular Python AI framework. Uh, Cafe, um, as you can see here, it's a convolutional architecture for fast feature embedding. Um, it's a deep learning framework originally developed at the uh, University uh, of California, Ber Berkeley. As I've already uh, mentioned, you must uh, choose any of the this framework by quantity, uh, quality, and uh, the type of your data set. So there is not a universal solution. For example, MXNet has the fastest training speed on uh, ResNet 50, uh, TensorFlow is fastest on VGG16, and PyTorch is the fastest on faster RCNN. So each, each is good at something. Um, you must choose according to your data set. XGBoost. It's also here, it's highly efficient, uh, flexible, and uh, portable uh, machine learning framework. Uh, you can enter some parameters here as coding directory, code directory, boot file. Uh, you can also uh, add here uh, running uh, parameters. So um, um, choose any uh, of these parameters um, as you uh, just like. Uh, and uh, as you can see here, uh, these training jobs are much more configurable and fine tunable and tweakable. Uh, but this one um, comes also with um, uh, more uh, complexity as well. Um, and our last option to create a training job is custom, custom container. Uh, when the engine uh, beneath is also changed, uh, that's the custom container where you are the freest. So this is the most customizable one. Uh, by this uh, one, um, we have the most uh, freedom. We can set the boot command, the training parameters. Uh, we can enter an image, so uh, a Docker image uh, as well, which preprocessing methods to use, uh, and a lot of stuff. Um, we can also uh, provide them some code here, uh, code directory, uh, as you can uh, see. Um, here you can see the inference script of MNIST recognition, uh, where we have this uh, MNIST service class and this preprocess and postprocess uh, methods. Um, these um, um, show you uh, how it handles the inputs and the outputs. Um, we can put uh, this code into the uh, coding uh, directory uh, here. Uh, you have a base image, and um, based on that, you can build your AI frameworks and install additional packages, libraries, and uh, you will use that container for training and inference uh, as well. 
so uh, you can choose any framework you need and after we hit uh, create now uh, this button here it will import the necessary dependencies build the model uh, and so on so the point is that it's importing a base container and then it puts those base codes into that container that serves the model and pulls the model down uh, you can see this um, XML and custom container AI engines built in algorithms are very similar uh, to each other. So you can have the question, uh, why so many? Um, how should I know which one to choose from these four? Uh, the explanation is um, how precisely uh, you want to fine tune your model. Um, so, for example, if you don't really have any coding experience, you just have a data set that uh, is already labeled or you labeled it and uh, want to try uh, it on uh, different data. Um, an image uh, if the algorithm is able to predict it or, uh, properly or not. I recommend using XML. It's pretty straightforward, no coding, uh, just importing the data set, building the model, deploying the service in the order I showed you uh, before. Uh, but uh, if it's a bit uh, uh, trickier, so it's not that easy and you have a bit coding and machine learning, deep learning, AI experience. Um, I showed you uh, in this order built-in algorithms, frameworks and custom containers. Um, and in this order, you can set more and more options. So choose carefully uh, to your liking. Uh, you have all the tools uh, uh, you need in model arts uh, here. So uh, let me go back to um, uh, dev environment uh, and uh, click on notebooks. Um, I've already started a notebook as you can see here, a notebook demo is its name. So I just have to open it. It's opening. Um, I uh, ran this previously um, to uh, have time so to other model art services, uh, but all I did was uh, creating a new uh, notebook and uh, you can see these options uh, here. Uh, MXNet, PySpark, TensorFlow, I chose the TensorFlow uh, 1.13 uh, um, um, because it has already some packages pre-installed, so uh, we won't um, have to waste uh, minutes by installing all of these uh, packages. Um, uh, so we can choose many uh, type of notebooks, as you can see, but uh, it's an interesting part that we, uh, if we want to have the old school way, we can also choose this terminal option um, where we can um, use a terminal for listing the packages. For example, uh, I am here, so I'm um, uh, listing all the packages that are pre-installed. I can install here uh, new packages. So it's a great stuff that we can use this uh, terminal as well. Uh, let me go back and open this uh, demo 0416 uh, notebook uh, that I um, prepared previously. So I'm clicking on it. And as the uh, Ori Python notebook uh, opens up, you can see um, that all the features are the same uh, in Jupyter notebook uh, as here. The menus, the cells, uh, the shortcuts, uh, we can do everything here as in Jupyter notebooks. Uh, for example, uh, if you're familiar with Jupyter notebooks, you can see that the cell type uh, is also something customizable. You can see uh, this uh, markdown uh, where you can uh, hit cus uh, HTML code, you can restart. So it's everything as here and the shortcut as well. For example, if I have this pip list command that I showed you in the terminal previously. I just hit shift plus enter. And as you can see, this star popped up. It, me it meaning that it's uh, loading, but now it uh, disappeared. So our command uh, has run uh, successfully. Um, so uh, with this pip uh, command, we check the, uh, if we have all the necessary uh, packages uh, for our deep learning exercise. Uh, you might know that the um, uh, leading AI or uh, specifically deep learning uh, framework in the Python programming language is Google's TensorFlow. Uh, we will need this for our model. Uh, it's excellent for model, uh, complex model building and uh, model evaluation. Um, it um, all ha also has many uh, built-in data sets. Uh, we will use uh, one of them today, this uh, Fashion MNIST data set. You might have heard about this one. Um, the special MNIST uh, closing classification problem is a new uh, standard uh, data set uh, used in computer vision and uh, deep learning. Uh, its data set comprised of uh, 60,000 small uh, square 28 by 28 uh, pixel grayscale images of items of 10 types of clothing, uh, such as uh, shoes, uh, t-shirts, trousers, pullovers, dresses, uh, as you can see here, and uh, many more. Uh, let's uh, begin, uh, begin the coding. So uh, as we can see here, 
uh, let's look for TensorFlow. We have TensorFlow Estimator, TensorFlow GPU, but not TensorFlow itself. So uh, let me uh, run this command where I install TensorFlow 2.00 beta version. Uh, I hit um, Shift Enter, and as you can see, it's collecting, it's uh, starting uh, to download it, and um, um, downloading, okay, running setup.py. And as we can see, successfully uh, uh, installed a few packages. And uh, once this uh, asterisk, this uh, star uh, is uh, disappearing, uh, that means that uh, it um, downloaded and installed the whole TensorFlow. OK, uh, it disappeared. So we are done with this. Now we can uh, run this pip list command again. And uh, if we are lucky, uh, then we can see if uh, TensorFlow uh, 2.0 uh, uh, beta version has been um, installed successfully. Yes, you can see here. Um, uh, once um, uh, this is done, we are listing the Python packages again, and that's uh, TF 2.0 is already uh, there. So we are TensorFlow importing as uh, alias TF, uh, also some helper libraries. Uh, let me uh, run this one uh, and um, tell you a bit about these libraries. Um, so uh, this helper library is NumPy. Uh, this is responsible for uh, numerical computations uh, in Python. Uh, we will treat all of our images and um, uh, amnist images as arrays uh, and to add, uh, subtract, multiply, power, divide, and these uh, operations. Uh, we can do all these uh, operations uh, on these arrays uh, very rapidly. Uh, so we use these numerical uh, computations uh, in Python or uh, NumPy in short. And Matplotlib uh, provides plotting features. Uh, we can uh, display charts, graphs, uh, diagrams. Uh, with this uh, Python library. Um, um, once we are done with these imports, um, let me uh, uh, run this one as well. As you can see, uh, TensorFlow TF Keras datasets. So uh, this is where we um, obtain the fashion and these datasets. Um, load the data uh, into four va variables. As you can see here, train images, train label, test images, test labels. And uh, to, these are two train and two uh, test uh, variables. And the reason behind uh, this, uh, that we are loading the actual images into uh, train images, this contains all the 60,000 images as arrays. To each array uh, belongs a label, and that label tells us what cloth, what image or array um, in this uh, case uh, represents. The test images and test label variables uh, do the same with the exception that we use these to test how our model uh, performs how accurate and uh, precise it is. So we are using these to test to evaluate the model. Uh, you can see here the 10 categories that I showed you previously. Uh, OK, and uh, we are uh, throwing these uh, categories into an array called class names. Once we are done uh, with this, um, Matplotlib uh, is used here, a PLT, matplotlib.pyplot, uh, it's an alias. Uh, so let me uh, enter zero here and uh, shift enter. As you can see here that we are um, displaying a couple of images from our train images. So for example, this that's the zeroth element. It's an ankle boot, as you can see. Uh, let me show you the fifth element. Uh, the fifth element is a pullover, as you can see. Another one as well, for example, the 34th, it's a t-shirt. Mm. After that, we are uh, normalizing our data, uh, both the test and the train uh, variables. We do this to uh, have uh, much uh, smaller numbers. We are changing the scale from 0 to 255 to a scale from uh, 0 to uh, 1. So during the upcoming training, the computations will deal with much lower numbers, uh, thus um, making the training uh, finish uh, much sooner. So if I uh, shift enter this, also can uh, see this PLT. So it's a matplotlib, it's a uh, displaying uh, cell. You can also see that nothing has changed. So uh, we can see these uh, clothes again. Uh, the core of this uh, code snippet here is this im show, I am show, image show um, uh, method, where we are iterating through these train images and we define our C map or color map. It's a binary, meaning uh, that we uh, have uh, black and white. So you can see this uh, five by five um, uh, matrix, this grid uh, uh, here. 
um, with different elements of our uh, data set. The important thing is this uh, intro line, as I uh, told you before, and uh, you can have the question why we set it to binary, meaning black and white. Uh, thus um, serves the uh, purpose of making the training uh, finish sooner as well, because the model can ignore colors from switch channels, since we only have one uh, color uh, channel. And the more reasonable uh, way to think of this color reducing is uh, to black and white is that um, uh, uh, the following. If you have a lot of colorful pictures, uh, it can be good to consider if the colors uh, really hold much um, relevant information for us. In, in, this, in this case, no, because uh, every clothes can be uh, white or black or brown, uh, so the color doesn't really uh, distinguish uh, the clothes, uh, as you can see here. The next step is the core of our deep learning task, the model building. It can be quite complex, uh, and there are many things in the background that uh, even we uh, who uh, deal with AI stuff don't know. But there are two key concepts uh, in this code snippet. In the sequential model, as you can see here, we are laying these layers down. You can see these uh, three layers here. Um, the first layer gets the 28 by 28 um, uh, pixel images as inputs. And in the last fully connected, uh, or in Keras, we call it dense layer. As you can see, we have two uh, dense layers. Uh, we enter how many categories we have. So we uh, have uh, here 10 categories, 10 type of uh, clothes here. The in-between dense layer, we call it as a hidden layer uh, here tries to learn the shapes, edges, uh, patterns, uh, what each cloth uh, has. So we are running this again. We are compiling the model in the 14th cell, as you can see here. Uh, you can see this name Adam here. Uh, it's adaptive moment uh, estimation. It's a, an optimization type uh, in uh, Keras. It's uh, one of the best and uh, most used optimizer. Um, we compute the loss uh, with the sparse categorical cross entropy uh, because, uh, you know, we have categories to predict. Uh, this is why we use this uh, type of rules, and we train to have the best uh, accuracy uh, possible, so we set the metrics to uh, accuracy. Okay, and um, uh, we start our training for uh, 10 epochs uh, in this one. Um, so we have our data set uh, train uh, back and forth 10 times. Uh, this means that the algorithm tries to learn by uh, examining every single element of our data set 10 times. So let me... Uh, run this cell and as you can see here it started is the first is the second and uh, all 60,000 of uh, or uh, element of the data set is uh, being examined uh, by the algorithms uh, this is the most uh, time consuming part of our whole exercise um, you can see how it uh, iterates through all the element of uh, uh, the data set in each epoch and it's important to know that the uh, structure of this model is a very simple one so it's uh, just for demonstrational purposes in real life we build much uh, more complex uh, models and by this image uh, classificational task we rather use uh, CNN so convolution and neural networks as uh, you could see in the built-in algorithms uh, once it's done oh cool it's uh, uh, finished uh, we can uh, print the test accuracy oh it's 88 uh, percent so it's quite good um, um, if we uh, see uh, how uh, simple our model is, it's uh, quite good. And in the next few lines, uh, as you can see here, we are creating a probability model and we are uh, predicting uh, all the uh, elements of our data sets. It's uh, in the predictions um, uh, variable. And once we are done with this, in the next few, uh, few lines, I make our uh, train model predict uh, all of the elements of our data set. Uh, I'm not going to explain uh, all of these, this uh, plot image and um, uh, this other uh, plot value array. Uh, they serve the purpose of uh, this uh, cell, which is uh, my favorite one, as you can see um, in um, uh, this here you can see also uh, um, a matrix a grid, um, 15 clothes, uh, and their corresponding labor predictions. Uh, and as you can see here, um, from 15 elements, only one uh, became falsely predicted, this uh, sneaker. <laughs> so uh, it, it was it was a sandalin case, but uh, you know, it's a sneaker. So yes, it uh, can be really uh, arguable, but in the case of the other 14, uh, of our models, um, they got uh, predicted uh, pretty uh, accurately. So this was our uh, dev environment uh, notebook uh, part uh, of the demo. Um, 
Uh, let me tell you a few things about uh, GANs. I first heard about GANs uh, two uh, years ago. Uh, however, these machine learning framework classes go back to 2014, when Ian Goodfellow and his colleagues invented uh, this approach to generative modeling using deep learning methods. Uh, generative adversarial network, uh, or GAN, is an algorithm um, uh, and an architecture that use two neural networks, the generator and the discriminator. The basic idea behind GANs that the generator and the discriminator contest with each other in a game and they learn in tandem. In the next slide, uh, you can see uh, the basic architecture of GAN, uh, where here is the generator. Um, its task is to generate real looking images to fool the discriminator. Uh, its input is Gaussian distributed random noise sampled from the latent space. Uh, as you can see here, noise, latent space, and uh, it uh, generates the generated uh, fake uh, samples. And the discriminator's task is uh, not to be fooled by the generator. Uh, so um, it has to differentiate, to compare the generated image with the real image, and to identify which image is fake and which is real. Um, the best way to understand GANS is the next example. Imagine a, a scenario where there are two parties, the, the counterfeiter and the treasury. The counterfeiter uh, wants to make the most convincing fake money possible, so they uh, look at examples of real money and try to learn what exact feature a real dollar bill has, and then produce a counterfeit. If the counterfeiter tries really hard and through uh, enough experience learns what really makes a dollar bill, uh, they can produce very convincing fakes. However, the treasury always um, has to be on top of the counterfeiters, so they focus on, on finer security details um, that um, uh, allow them to better uh, discriminate between the real uh, dollar bills and the fake dollar bills. Um, so uh, through the process of constantly trying to beat, beat each other, over time, the forger, the counterfeiter, uh, keeps improving their skills uh, at making fake dollar bills, and the treasury gets better at detecting the fakes. So similar to uh, this uh, setup in the counterfeiters and treasury, the GANs uh, have a counterfeiter network, that is the generator, and the treasury network, uh, that is the discriminator. Uh, here you can see a real-world example of a game that uh, pr produces photorealistic cats. So at first, the generator is generating images that are similar to this uh, end fights or, or end football, as you remember from all TV channels where there was no uh, proper broadcasting, so only noise. And from uh, this noise, the generator learns uh, so much that in the end it will produce images like uh, cats uh, up uh, uh, there. In the next slides, I uh, show you a couple of utilization of generative adversarial networks. So in this slide, you can see some uh, black and white images to colored images, satellite photos to maps, uh, drawings to uh, photos, uh, and so on. Um, and in the next slide, you uh, might have uh, uh, already heard about this one. There was a very popular mobile application uh, three or four years ago uh, that has been downloaded by millions, but uh, not many people knew that in the background, a powerful generator and discriminator were contesting with each other. Uh, trying to produce an image of the user uh, 30, 40, 50 years older. Um, I don't have to say, but uh, you know, uh, deepfakes are also based on GANs. Uh, this is an actual use case of a super resolution GANs. Uh, GANs are now uh, used in uh, the video game industry as well. They are responsible for upscaling the graphics uh, at the newest uh, Xboxes. Uh, you can see a handle uh, on example of GANs in the next few slides. Uh, this shows you uh, how GANs work uh, using the MNIST dataset, but this MNIST dataset uh, is not the fashion MNIST dataset uh, I showed in a notebook example. It's the digit MNIST dataset where the computer tries to recognize handwritten digits. And in our case, the AI tries to generate handwritten digits so that the discriminator will not be able to differentiate the digits drawn by the humans and the digits generated by the uh, generator, by the computer. And um, uh, yes, you can see here that uh, in the uh, first few epochs, uh, they are, the, the numbers are not that uh, good, but in the later epochs, uh, you can see the zero, two, so they are recognizable. But my favorite slide uh, comes here. Um, uh, this helps the uh, uh, this helps um, for the people to understand how GANs work. Uh, I think the most usual, uh, visual way this shows the learning process of generator uh, for the digital uh, MNIST dataset at the left side and the fashion MNIST dataset we could see in the notebook example um, uh, previously uh, uh, how uh, it um, uh, generates um, pullovers, uh, t-shirts, trousers, and so on. If you are interested in other utilization of uh, uh, GANs, uh, I recommend uh, checking out uh, these sites. And as you can see, see here in the previous slides, GANs are always used for data generation and 99% for image generation. 
as in the case of our today's main subject, OTC again as well. So let me um, open the internet as, uh, again uh, and uh, show you this. Uh, before OTC again, let me tell you a few words about the prehistory of OTC again. Uh, one of the most famous and successful GANs in the past few years is NVIDIA SPADE. SPADE stands for Semantic Image Synthesis with Spatial Adaptive Normalization. Here you can find SPADE's uh, official uh, website and also uh, here you can see uh, SPADE's uh, GitHub directory. Um, to put it simply, SPADE uses very primitive paintings called segmentations images and predicts photorealistic images from that. Uh, and we grabbed SPADE's underlying structure and took it a step further uh, in our OTC GAN. Let me show you, show you how to use OTC uh, GAN uh, uh, here. So uh, once I um, load uh, up the page, uh, you can see here that I have a doodling uh, that um, it can be drawn by a six-year-old, um, so it's not a Mona Lisa or a Picasso, as you can see here. Uh, it's just a six or seven uh, colors uh, of images. Uh, but um, once uh, I uh, wait a, a few seconds, uh, then interesting thing uh, will happen. Um, a photorealistic uh, Big Cities Avenue popped up in the right side of the screen. Um, as you can see here, it's a picture uh, from uh, Berlin. Um, so, uh, as you can uh, see here, uh, I'm uh, um, painting a little uh, blue blob, so I broaden this uh, little one. Uh, you can see that in the in a few seconds, uh, okay, uh, I wait and uh, look at the right uh, picture. Um, the grass uh, has broadened a little bit. I also do the similar with the uh, right side uh, of the grass. Uh, I also wait a few uh, seconds and uh, Bam! Uh, the, uh, on the right side, the grass uh, also expanded. Uh, so we can grow grass, but uh, you know the grass cannot grow if it doesn't get enough sunshine, only shadow instead. So let's expand this uh, red blob uh, in here. And uh, as you can see, uh, within a few seconds, we remove the top three or four floors of these scrapers. Hopefully, uh, no employers were uh, working up there anymore. I show uh, another picture of Berlin. Uh, this is a street scene uh, and um, uh, as you can see here, and this last one as well. Uh, now you can uh, choose uh, from uh, four data sets. Uh, at the previous example, you, should, uh, you can see Berlin. Uh, this is uh, another uh, data sets example. Um, uh, Wadi Rum, or Valley of the Moon. It's a valley cut into the sandstone and the granite rock in southern Jordan. So it's uh, much different from the seed photos of Berlin. Uh, we are a bit freer than before. Uh, hopefully no one will be angry at us if we are creating a rock hill in the left side or um, destroy as well. Um, so uh, we have a lot of pictures in uh, Wadi Rum as well. Uh, as you can see, uh, for example, uh, this one. Um, so um, we can uh, experiment on those. Uh, as you can see in the uh, left um, um, corner, bottom corner, we choose uh, Island uh, 4K, so back to Europe. Um, uh, with these uh, twin mountains. Uh, let's make them uh, a triplet, I think, by painting a third uh, mountain in between them. And uh, if you are waiting a few seconds, hopefully, uh, okay, the triplet uh, third uh, part was also born. And uh, if we uh, can create them, we can also destroy, so remove the first uh, uh, hill as well, making them uh, twin uh, again. We are waiting a few seconds and Hopefully, yes, uh, that's uh, the one. Uh, we could remove uh, the uh, first uh, hill. Uh, we have uh, also other uh, pictures of Ireland, and we have this Turk, uh, Turk San Miklos dataset, which is a cool Hungarian uh, town. Um, we also have uh, uh, seven, eight uh, images as well, segmentation images, as you can see, uh, these doodling, these paintings here. Uh, I'm choosing this one, and I broaden a bit uh, this river, uh, as you can see here. Uh, okay, uh, I painted it. Let's wait a few seconds. And in the other uh, right uh, picture, the river got broadened. Oh, how cool it would be if, if it would be so simple in reality. Uh, we also are broadened a little bit. Okay, um, done. So that was the Gangui uh, part of my presentation. Uh, thank you for watching and uh, please feel free to uh, raise your questions now. If I can see the uh, chat. Where can I find more information about built-in algorithms? Yes, uh, you can find it in Docs uh, OTC. Uh, does anyone have a question? Well, uh, at first, let me thank you for this great presentation. Um,
do you plan to include the GAN support in the uh, yeah general user interface of uh, Model Arts? The sorry, the general. Yeah, the G GAN support uh, for these uh, for generating these images. Uh, do you plan to include this uh, uh, in the website of uh, the OpenCom uh, Cloud? Uh, here's, yes, uh, here's my uh, colleague, uh, uh, Jolt, uh, who is uh, uh, better at this one, but I think we have to align. Uh, Jolt, what's your opinion about this question? Or Torsten? Uh, so, uh, Torsten is speaking. Uh, so, first of all, let's say it's, uh, it's a showcase for now, uh, but we already um, think about how to in integrate this maybe. Yeah? But at the moment, let's say it's, it's only a showcase to, do, uh, to, to show the possibility uh, how to use model arts and all those things, yeah. yeah but for sure, we will think about this. Uh, yes, as I can see, uh, there is a question. Uh, is it possible to add existing model uh, to model arts? Uh, yes, you have to specify the parameters. Um, in, in the, you know, in a config JSON, uh, import the model in the model management tab, as uh, I told you earlier. Or you can also use a custom container or an AI framework to uh, deploy it as a, a service. So. Um, Yes, of course, it's uh, possible. If uh, there is no, not so much question, um, then if you um, agree, uh, I have 10 minutes, so I will show you another thing as uh, well, this gun editor uh, uh, stuff. Um, I go back a little bit and show you from the start. So uh, if this OTC gun editor uh, is responsible for creating uh, this uh, data set uh, gun generators, uh, as you could uh, see in my gun GUI example. So um, once we are successfully logged in and enter the dashboard of the gun editor, or we call it GPC, or um, uh, gun process controller, you will see this screen. Uh, in the left side of it, uh, you can add, remove, authentication, authenticate uh, groups and uh, users. Uh, modify background tasks and um, you can see uh, these uh, re recent actions uh, that you do uh, or did previously. By clicking the OTC uh, gun generator, uh, you can arrange and set up your trainings. Um, on the gun editor surface, you can see all your previous trainings or so-called OTC gun uh, generators listed. You can add, import new uh, ones, start um, exporting existing ones and um, now let me uh, uh, open uh, Island 4K. I will show the details of uh, this existing one. Uh, you can set many parameters uh, of your generator here, uh, such as name, uh, source type. You can see that it uh, can be from a YouTube video, OBS bucket. Uh, let me show this uh, train source. Now it's a YouTube video, as I already told you. So let me uh, enter paste uh, here and this, um, YouTube video opens up in a, a few uh, seconds. Let me, okay. And you can see these images uh, that you uh, show, uh, saw before uh, at my Gongui example. So I use this exact video to create this island uh, data set. So we have this whole pipeline that uh, uh, it processes this YouTube video, extract the frames, uh, and uh, you know, put it in a model, um, make it a segmentation data set, a uh, photorealistic data set as well. So uh, uh, if I stop uh, the YouTube video here, you can see this three mountain that I showed you before. This was exactly the same uh, uh, frame, I think. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, that's it. So I specified the train source. Uh, source filter is also a very uh, good stuff because um, you know, it defines the starting second and the ending second of the intervals. Uh, you want to extract from the video. Um, separate the starting and the ending seconds with uh, uh, high fence, as you can see, uh, and the intervals uh, uh, with columns. So it's um, really good because, you know, if you have a very uh, cool video on YouTube or uh, you made it, but in the first, for example, three seconds, the tourist or the YouTuber uh, talks about uh, himself or the uh, tour or the uh, place uh, that he's visiting. So you can uh, cut that and um, uh, enter the starting minute and the starting second uh, here. 
uh, you can ho have this overwrite option uh, if you had a, a similar data set previously, for example, Berlin, uh, you can uh, tick it or uh, not. You can also have this uh, segmentation model. Now we can use PSP at 50 uh, ADA 20K. Uh, as YouTube, as a YouTube, you can also uh, um, set the video format for um, uh, HD ready, uh, full, full HD, or just um, uh, 480p. Uh, uh, this frame step is also a very cool feature. Um, this uh, frame step defines which frames uh, you want to extract from the video. It must be uh, an integer and uh, generally uh, we use the value of uh, 10, uh, uh, 15 or 20. So uh, if you set it to uh, 15, for example, it will extract every 15th uh, frame of uh, uh, the video uh, that you provided at the train source. You can also have this uh, percentage training. If you uh, set this, uh, you will see this uh, training, the category number, you know, uh, how many categories uh, will you uh, have. For example, if you have, um, you know, like a, a forest data set, for example, for the trees, one category, uh, for the ground, one category, for the mountains, for the sky, and so on. You can also specify this. Uh, test image, test label, aspect ratio. So a lot, a lot of uh, hyperparameters, a lot of stuff. For example, this last one is the GPU ID. Uh, how many GPU cores uh, you want to use? Uh, how many epochs you want to use at the which epoch? Um, uh, so, so a lot of uh, really uh, useful and cool stuff. Um, uh, once uh, you set all of the things, you can uh, click on the save button and um, it says, you know, uh, that it was uh, changed successfully. You can also add OTC gun, uh, generators, uh, new ones. Uh, you can see that nothing is uh, uh, in here. So uh, we are specifying the train source. Uh, I think we are also using YouTube video that's now and we, uh, we will have, a, um, again, a um, place from Germany. It's Neuschweinstein. It's a really cool and beautiful castle um, uh, we specify in the YouTube video let me show you the YouTube video uh, how it looks uh, Neuschweinstein uh, yes this is, that is the one so I will use it uh, for uh, my training uh, it's much more uh, wonderful in reality so I definitely recommend uh, visiting this place it's uh, uh, near Munich so uh, we are I also specifying the source filter uh, as you can see um, uh, I want the first minute so I uh, enter there uh, I don't want the overwrite option uh, ticked in. Uh, I think, yes, the highest resolution is uh, cool uh, with this video. And uh, once it's done, I think uh, these are all okay. Uh, I uh, add, added uh, successfully this OTC gun uh, generator. As you can see here in the first line, Neuschweinstein YouTube video, every uh, parameter that uh, we saw uh, uh, before. The percentage training is minus 1%. Um, that means that we didn't start it, uh, it uh, yet, so uh, we can also confirm uh, gun generators. These are all the fields that we have to enter in our uh, JSON or XML file. Uh, so uh, uh, this is when uh, it will uh, accept it. You can also see these uh, formats here. We can use these uh, Excel files, XLS, XLS axes, TSVs, uh, CSVs, so comma separated values, tab separated values, JSON files, uh, YMS, so almost uh, anything. Uh, once we are uh, done with this, uh, we can see uh, again uh, oral um, data sets uh, and or GAN generators. There is this unpublish button and this process GAN uh, buttons. Uh, when we uh, unpublish it, uh, then it will uh, start the training. So the percentage training will be uh, 0, 1 uh, until 100%. Uh, uh, so this is how uh, we are uh, making this um, uh, data that you could see on GANGUI. Uh, as I can see here, uh, Tim uh, Delbrugger uh, asked, um, um, we are looking into supporting the AutoML frameworks like AutoCars in XML so that the models built uh, without domain knowledge uh, have higher accuracy in the future. Uh, that is also a question, I think, uh, from Jod. Uh, have you uh, heard about this um, AutoML support? Or Torsten, maybe, because I haven't yet. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, go ahead. I just need to read the uh, question once again, but uh, if you already can answer this, Charles, then fine. Yeah, uh, my idea was just uh, uh, to, to uh, as you said, uh, with XML, uh, someone who has no uh, real uh, knowledge in, in the field of AI uh, can already get some nice models and, and uh, really uh, 
have a nice user experience. Um, but but of course you can, uh, as an expert in AI, you can get higher performance of the models uh, when you build them then sell yourself in in TensorFlow also. Um, but but there is some development in in this field of AutoML where uh, yeah. AutoKeras and and uh, other libraries like AutoSKLearn or yep. yeah, Pport I think so. Uh, uh, really try to uh, get a better performance uh, even without uh, yeah, specifying so many auto uh, parameters, uh, hyperparameters yourself. Yeah, uh, I think I could answer this. So in the in the next version, the auto labeling uh, feature or some version of the auto labeling, uh, most probably there. Uh, it's under discussion in in which level uh, we will uh, support the auto labeling. But yes. Uh, it's a good point, and uh, we already uh, uh, planning to uh, to release the auto labeling feature in the moderates. Oh, really cool! Thanks. Uh, as I can see here, it's already eleven o'clock. So uh, thank you everyone for uh, your attention. Uh, I hopefully you enjoyed the presentation, and uh, thank you very much again. So thank you to everybody who have joined today our webinar. Thank you a lot, Faring, for uh, for the presentation here. And see you in two weeks again in the next webinar hosted by the community. Thank you a lot. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Many Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.